Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Fish Report Live. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Craig Fissinger. That is Ken Francis. We're your host. Back in our sound room are two guys we like to call TK and Heavy D. We'll be joining them a little bit later in the program. And out in Studio R, of course, it's Covey and Kearns. Always have fun talking to them. And Ken, I don't know if you saw our new opening there, but we got a new, or not a new opening, but a new clip in there of our own uh, Kearns out there in, in Studio R. I, I see, a little fun. I seen that big left-handed throwdown for Kearns the other night. Uh, pretty proud of the guy. Uh, you know, he uh, he's having a heck of a year for the Raiders, and great to see him finally get himself a little dunk. Absolutely, and you know, I, I kind of was in a little bit of a rut here lately. Uh, my uh, my my favorite team for the first time in six years, not playing for a county title. The the, the girls are my my favorite girls teams, kind of out of it. My junior high teams a little earlier this week were were, were done playing, uh, but you know. Girls tournament draw was last weekend. Boys is coming up this weekend. I'm re-energized. All right, Craig. Well, you know what? You should be because uh, it's uh, coming tournament time. The the regular season is winding down. The the league championships are tight. You know, a lot of them are still yet to be decided. And we got a big show tonight, Craig. We're going to talk about some high school basketball. And we got a huge interview tonight, Craig, with none other than John Willoughby. He's in his 33rd year of coaching high school basketball. He spent 30 years at Houston in the Shelby County Athletic League. Craig, he made the jump up to D1. He's the now the head coach over at Duck Dunk Sydney <laughs> and uh, the Sydney Yellow Jackets head coach. And, uh, you know, Craig, they're a lot of fun to watch. I've yet to see them, but uh, I see a lot of highlights of them all the time. So really interested uh, to see what Coach Willoughby has to say on the show this morning. Yeah, we did have him on this show back. It's probably been six, seven years ago, I think. But back when he was at house, then we mm-hmm. had him on the show. So it's going to be fun talking to him now as the head coach of Sydney. Can't wait to get to that interview. Speaking of house and speaking of the, the league races, you know, uh, again, my favorite team out of it right now. But uh, there's still some something to be decided there because last Friday there was a big game between Ann and Jackson Center. Yeah, there was, Craig. Big win by Coach Scott Elkert and the Jackson Center Tigers. They went over to Anna and walked out of there with a big league win, handing the Rockets their first loss of the season, Craig. They now just sit one game behind the Anna Rockets. Interesting, Craig. Who would have thought now at this point in the season, Friday night, uh, Anna has to travel to Fort Laramie, a very, very tough game for the Rockets, and then they have to close the season with a game at Rushi. So now all of a sudden, as we look at these league standings, Jackson Center's got a, a great chance to uh, at least possibly share or who knows, possibly win the league outright when a week ago nobody thought that was even possible. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fun league right now, and it, like yet those two top positions yet to be decided. Uh, you know, then you look all the way down there in the number six spot, and you got the Fairlawn Jets at eight and ten. I know you just saw them last Friday night. Mm-hmm. Even all the way down there in that six spot, you still got a very good team in Fairlawn. They're a great team, Craig. They're led by the two sophomore twins, the Piper boys, and uh, great basketball players. Craig, we uh, seen them play Friday. Uh, actually, it was a Monday night game, and uh, not only are they good players, Craig, they have a lot of fun out there on the court. You know, I I seen uh, a lot. Lot of uh, long distance three balls and uh, just some fun things going on out there. Uh, but uh, good, uh, like you said, a good basketball team, Craig. They're expected to get their point guard back here in another week or so. That's really going to energize the Jets and look for them to be a tough tournament draw. Whoever gets them in, in the pickle sectional. Yeah, I can't wait for that tournament. It's still a little bit. To- be decided in the county race but yeah what tournament's going to be here before we know it tournament draw this weekend a lot of fun can't wait to talk about it next week uh speaking of tournament draw and speaking of league uh standings let's talk to uh, the guys out in studio r kobe and kearns will go out there and guys i know you want to talk tournament and i know that scal's kind of been decided already but with still uh still some other races in the uh the ccc maybe and in the mac going on yeah there is some um but most most of what we expected uh with the mac Really ended on Thursday um, that we believe with Minster defeating uh, Versailles there over over at Minster. They won uh, commandingly. Versailles did play without Danielle Kunk over there. 
and Minster's got to play New Knoxville tomorrow. New Knoxville's a, a solid team. Yeah, they, they've got some good players. Um, I, I've covered a couple of their games for NK Toko. They have a good point guard by the name of Aaron Scott. She averaged around five assists per game for them. Um, Megan Jurassic, another good inside player for them. Um, they actually lost to the Rushi Raiders the other night, but should be a, a, a good, solid game for Minster. Good, solid test them going in a tournament. But they should be close to wrapping up the uh, mat and the MAC. Uh, yeah, that loss of Danielle Kunk without them really limited them. Um, they took the lead uh, early in the fourth quarter. I think it was 25-24, to 24, and it was just Courtney Pranger the rest of the way. I think she scored 13. I think uh, they went on a 13-0 run. I think Courtney had eight of them. So, uh, like me and Ken said last uh, last week on the show, that the defense inside needed to take care of Courtney, and they just couldn't contain her. Courtney, I think, had 22 on the night, and she did the job for the Mr. Wildcats getting a nice win for him for Mac play. Yeah, in, in the CCC, it looks like still Tri Village is on a roll, ready to wrap that up. It's impressive. They've been playing without Trisha Porter basically all year due to, due to an undisclosed injury. Um, she was a big force in their team last year. She's able to create space and shoot shots. A very strong player there out there on the perimeter of Coach Brad Gray's team. They have a, a contest with Rushi next week, a, ma- a rematch of that district final last year. They're ranked number four in the state. If they go through and win a district title, it looks like they could have a potential rematch with the Minster Wildcats. And speaking of tournament draw, there, there's a great chance that we could see the exact same format of last year where you have Fort Laramie playing Covington and then you have Tri-Village playing Minster on the other side. So actually this might be shaping up well for Larmy if you really look at it. Uh, Minster's going to have to play a really good Tri-Village team, a team that's only lost once to Versailles in overtime at the Bill Burkett Holiday Tournament over there in early November. And then they'd have to go through and face Larmy, who they've lost to in overtime. So Minster's got a really tough tournament trail, let alone they got to go play up there in that Wapak sectional. And there's a lot of good teams up in that Wapak sectional. I'd take a lot of those Wapak teams and put them down in Sydney. And they'd be a lot of the Sydney teams, like such as New Bremen, um, New Knoxville, and so on. So there's, there's a lot of good teams up in the Wapak sectional. It's going to be a tough draw for Minster to get out of. Um, yeah, like you said, with that Wapak um sectional up there it's a lot of max schools a lot of max schools kind of complain about it all of them get thrown up there i think the only one out is cold water and uh versailles is obviously for d3 and um with minster fort Laramie, covington tri-village kind of a dynasty same four as last year as this year kind of like college football playoffs it's the same four teams over and over again usually but i think it'll be four solid games covington might have a little trouble if rushi can get out of the sectional um, and play in a district, but I think Sammy White will take over and just have those four teams back in the in the regional semi at um, uh, I believe it's Vandalia, and it's going to be a great four game matchup, and it's going to be exciting to get out to. Yeah, and I, I would say Covington's the most vulnerable team to not be able to win the district title. They could have to face maybe Xenia Legacy Christian or um, Rushi as well, and they, they beat Rushi by about eight. And Xenia Legacy Christian, the two seeds, sitting at an eighteen and two record. There and the number two seed in that Sydney sectional. Guys, I'm glad you mentioned Legacy Christian and Rushi because they were the number two in the three or two and three seeds, I believe, in that uh, that Sydney sectional. You didn't mention them originally when you were talking about some of those good teams like Larmy and Minster. Do you think there's any chance for those two teams? I don't know much about Legacy Christian. Of course, I know a lot about Rushi. Uh, a chance for one of those teams to work their way in that into that uh, those matchups. Yeah, I definitely think Legacy can. Um, they beat Layman by nine, which is a little bit of a reference point. Um, they they uh, lost a close game to a, a little over 500 alter team. That's a Division Two, um, from my research. So yeah, they got a, they got a very uh, solid a solid um, chance to make a run into the regional if they want to. But I wouldn't say they're a regional title contender. Uh, yeah, Rushi's got to play Bakins. Bakins is 500 after they um, after they first they played Layman and then Bakins got the bye. You know, Bakins still might be a struggle. The first time they played them, they only beat them at their place by 10. So they shouldn't overlook them too much. But once they get through them, I'm assuming Coach Timmerman is um, searching all of his sources. I believe they play Troy, uh, Troy Christian tonight. So he's probably going to be at that game scouting away, getting all the information he can to prepare his Raiders for what, what's probably going to be the sectional final. You know, I seen the Layman Cavaliers. Uh, you know, Anna only beat them by six points the other night. So I, I wouldn't discount the uh, Layman Cavaliers uh, as, as well. Uh, so I think you're looking at a fairly tough tournament draw for Rushi uh, going in as well. Yeah, I, I've covered Layman twice, Ken. I was actually at that Anna game the other night, covered that game. And uh, Layman's biggest thing is they don't shoot a whole lot of threes. They shoot in from about 13 feet or so. And we, we have, I don't think we've ever talked about Layman girls basketball once on this show, maybe. But. 
their their thing is is they really Anna wasn't able to convert last night. I think they had a little bit of a hangover after the rough game they had against Laramie. Layman had upwards of, or Anna had upwards of twenty turnovers, but they still shot seventeen of thirty five from the field last night. That's very efficient and it's still won in the ball game. And even if we want to get to Anna here, Anna's got a very a, a tough tournament draw here as well. They could they could have a rematch in that sectional finals with Versailles if you recall that um, regular season matchup, Ella Dosek hit a buzzer beater for Ver, uh, Anna to beat Versailles. Um, yeah, that'll be a fantastic rematch. I know last um, earlier in the season, Ella Dosek uh, lit it up. She had 30 on us earlier in the season, and then they rolled over um, over the Raiders. So having her hot and going into the sectional and potentially knocking off Versailles in the in the um, tournament is something that hasn't happened to Versailles in a long while. They've been a they've been a dynasty in D3 going to state, I think, back-to-back -back years, maybe three times. So big, getting, a, getting a big win for them. Um, D3 beating that team, they could go on a big run. Guys, we, we have just a, a minute left here, but I do want to talk maybe a little bit more about that D3, uh, the, those sectional games. And, and there's some more teams other than just Anna and Versailles that are very good in, in, in the D3 uh, region, aren't there? Yeah, this is the deepest Division three sectional in girls that I can remember in a long time. There's great teams out there. There's Versailles. There's Anna. There's Waynesville, who I believe is undefeated. Purcell Marion, who I believe has one loss. There's also, you, Craig, your favorite team, West Liberty Salem, the Big Orange. <laughs> Number 10 in the, in the state poll finally Dude, this they week. Jumped out they, they got as in. well as Miami East. We know they took Larmy into overtime. We know their big player over there, Morgan Haney. So there's six formidable teams there in that, uh, and just in that sectional, in the couple sectionals, I know that Ann and Versailles matchup could be potentially played at Covington High School, so it's a very close mm -hmm. game. Uh, for people to go over to watch if it if it uh, indeed happens. So this is a very deep Division three sectional. Yeah, that West Liberty Salem team, they had a lot of solid wins throughout the season. So um, playing them in the tournament, you know, that can be a scary a scary t um, matchup for any of those teams. So watch out for them, definitely um, potentially knocking anybody out of that sectional. Yeah, they lost their first three games of the season, which made people forget about them pretty quick. And then they rattled off, I know, 15 in a row after beating Fort Laramie, Anna, and then Versailles. So, uh, yeah, they're a team to, to, to keep your eye on for sure. All right, guys, listen, we're out of time, but uh, thanks a bunch for that. Uh, we'll look forward to talking to you next week and talk a little bit more about tournament. We're going to take a short break, but stay right there. When we come back, we're going to switch back to boys basketball, including that big interview with Sydney coach John Willoughby.
and welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Before the break, Ken, we were talking SCAL, we were talking MAC, we were talking CCC, and finally we get to talk about the G-Walk. I know it's a conference that we talk about off-air a lot of times, but haven't talked about it yet on air, and I'm glad we get to do that tonight. That brings us to our next guest. He's in his 33rd season as the head coach of the Sydney Yellow Jackets. Actually, in his third season with Sydney, you mentioned uh, at the top of the show, spent 30 years at Houston. During that time, Ken, he's accumulated accumulated 394 career wins, including 52 at Sydney. We welcome to the program now John Willoughby. Coach, thanks for joining us on Fish Report Live. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, you, you know how I know you have an exciting team? When my, when my daughter, who's a cheerleader for Rushi, last Friday night comes to me and says, Dad, our, our game got postponed, so I'm heading to Sydney to watch the uh, Yellow Jackets take on Troy uh, in a basketball game. That, that's how I know you have an exciting, exciting team, when, when my daughter's heading to Sydney to, to watch your team. But, uh, Coach, how have the crowds and how have the fans been for you this season? Yeah, um, we see a lot of that. We get a lot of fans from the uh, people from the area coming to want to watch, it, watch us play. Um, it, it's uh, nice to see familiar faces coming and, and uh, saying hi to me and, and wanting to watch us play. We are an exciting team. Um, sometimes that kind of gets in the way of, uh, of uh, playing basketball, but, <laughs> you know, people like to come see us. We're very athletic, and uh, we get out and run a little bit, and, and uh, our kids are aware of that, and they, they – they want to put on a show, and they and they're doing a good job of uh, balancing that between uh, with uh, winning some ball games. Well, one guy, of course, that's been very exciting and, and definitely puts on a show is your senior over there, Andre Gordon. And uh, coach, he just—I know—he just broke the school scoring record, a record that goes all the way back to 1988. Uh, whenever he finishes a, his career there at Sydney, in your opinion, how do you think he's going to be remembered? Well, first off, I think he's going to be remembered as uh, a quality young man. Um, he gets along with everybody. He's very uh, – his teammates enjoy being around him. The coaching staff likes being around him. Uh, he's very coachable. So those are probably the main things, what I'm going to remember him by, and I think a lot of the people that know the basketball program will remember him by. Uh, he's – you know, he's – He's going to be remembered as one of the top players in Sydney high school history. There's no doubt about that. I'm not here to say that he's going to be remembered as the best player ever at Sydney. Uh, that's probably not for me to, to make that comment. But um, um, I'm, I'm more thrilled on how he's accepted me, really, um, to come in and, and coach him. And uh, just a quality young man he is. That's, a, that's what I'm going to remember him as. Coach, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. This is Ken Francis. Um, Andre, of course, grabs all the headlines. Um, you know, the, the, he gets all the, the social media videos. But, uh, you know, one thing I've seen and read about Andre is he's always quick to recognize his teammates. Uh, he gives the, he gives a lot of his credit to the to the rest of the team and to, and to the coaches. Um, who, who on the team has also been a nice supporting cast for Andre, and uh, you know who else has been beneficial for your team this year? Yeah. Well, to go along with the question prior to that, that's one that's one good thing about Andre that he's going to be remembered as. He understands the importance of team, and he's more about winning than he is on his own statistics. There's more. There's kids in the in the G Walk and around the area that are going to ha- have higher scoring averages and, and things like that. But uh, he's not interested in that. He's more interested in about making his team better and uh, and helping us win some some games and some league titles and, and tournament championships. So to go along with the question before that, I think that's important to understand about Andre. Um, other players so far, uh, Rotez Roberts. I think he's, you know, without Rotez, he's a six-three senior. plays uh, plays inside for us, and uh, Rotez is a blocking machine. <laughs> Even he has, I think, I think he says he has like a seven-seven wings wings span, <laughs> so he's able to uh, uh, take easy baskets away from our opponents. Uh, there's a lot of 
lot of players that think they have easy layups or easy shots in the middle, and Rotez just, if you ever watched him play, he just, he just swats those. He just swats those shots away like it's nothing. It's, it's very impressive. Um, Darren Taborn's playing real well. He's a six-one uh, junior guard. Uh, Darren just—he's an aggressive player, and that complements Andre really well because you know all the attention. A lot of the attention is on Andre, so Darren is able to attack the basket, and he's really good at doing that. Um, Josiah Hudgens, even though he doesn't score a lot, um, he's valuable to the team just because of his defensive uh, presence on the floor. We usually match him up with the best offensive player on the team, uh, perimeter player on the on the team we're playing against. And Josiah just keeps people in front of him. Uh, he doesn't get a lot of steals, but his the guy that he's guarding doesn't score very often, and that's very impressive at the level he's playing at. Coach, uh, you know, you've got a big game coming up. Uh, uh, there's a lot of conference games coming up. Right now you're sitting tied with Vandalia Butler for the top spot in the G-Walk North. You're both 10-2. and two. You've got to play Vandalia again. Um, you know, what's the incentive like for the Yellow Jackets to win the conference this year? You know, potentially the uh, I think the G-Walk might be breaking up next year, so this could be your last chance to win the, the North title. Uh, a lot of incentive there, and, and, and what's it going to take to, uh, to win the league? Yeah, you know, right now we play uh, Pickle on Friday. That's a rival game for us, and they always play us tough. So our concentration is solely on Pickle. But it'd be impressive to win the league for the third time in a row, third year in a row. You know, there's not many teams uh, in in any division or in, in any league that does that. So... Uh, that would be something that this team would be remembered for, uh, winning the winning the league three times in a row. What it's going to take, uh, first we're going to need to play well against Piqua. Um, as I said before, it's a rivalry game, and they're always ready to play us. And, and that's one thing I've learned, you know, being at Sydney is, and with, with, the, with the players that we have, uh, every game is a challenge because every team is, is – excited and pumped to play us so we have to be ready every game uh we have to take that challenge on that we're going to uh take the best shot from all the teams that we play against but um um, we're gonna have to win out to win the league there's no doubt about that there's no question about that our players know that so um right now we're we're trying to get back to uh playing our style of basketball and, and concentrating on the defensive end and being able to shut down our opponents. Coach, I'm going to take you way back to your college days at Miami <laughs> University. Uh, I'm a big Dayton Flyer fan growing up, still am today. I remember sitting at home listening on the radio between the big battles between the Dayton Flyers and, and the Miami Redskins. Um, yeah. Back then, now I think they're the Red Hawks. But, uh, right. you know, um, how does playing college basketball back a few years ago when you played relate to the type of team you've got right now at Sydney? Because you try, you trying to seem to be that type of a college atmosphere type team. Right. Yeah, you know, um, athletically, it's, it's comparable. You know, we, we have great athletes at Sydney, and, and at Miami we had great athletes. You know, I played with Ron Harper, who's, you know, won six NBA titles and is a great <laughs> athlete in himself. And, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you, you you know, at this level, you let the kids do what they're able to do and and give them the freedom to, to operate on the basketball floor. They're, we're very smart basketball players. They understand the game very well, and, and they know what they're capable of doing, and and as a coach, I try to let them uh, let them do that, and making sure though that we stay within the team concept and and knowing that we have to buckle down defensively and all that. But yeah, you know, I think that's why some people come watch us play is just to see the athleticism that we have and the excitement we have when we play basketball. Coach, I got to ask you back in them playing days, who usually got the upper hand there, you or Coach Don Donaher in the Dayton Flyers? <laughs> well, I think I think we were pretty even. You know, they, Roosevelt Chapman, uh-huh. uh, Damon Goodwin, 
Um, and we had we had some good games, and I think back then we played each other twice. We did, time. yep, we did. Yeah, and, and, and that was always exciting. I had well, my freshman year, my first game against UD. I remember that very vividly. That a uh, uh, couple plays that I made to help us win the game as a freshman <laughs> at Miami. <laughs> be nice if they could play just once a year now. <laughs> yeah, I know that would be that would be. Well, Coach, listen, hey, we're running out of time. Didn't even get a chance to ask you about tournament, but I do have one more question to ask you. You know, certainly we were able to keep better track of you when you were playing in the in the Shelby County Athletic League all those years over at House. And, uh, you know, it looks like you're having a lot of fun, though, at Sydney, which I'm sure you are. But uh, is there anything you miss uh, about the uh, the Division Three, Division Four small school ball compared to what you're, uh, you're, you're playing against now? Well, I think probably the biggest thing is, is – uh Knowing the coaches uh, that I coached against, um, even though we were very competitive against each other and we battled each other, you know, down to the buzzer, I think, you know, seeing them out and being able to talk to them, uh, I miss that uh, togetherness with the coaching, uh, the, the uh, guys that I coached against in the Shelby County League and other areas that we played against in in the G Walk and in, in the and level I'm at now, we, we just don't get that, uh, you know, you don't get to see them as often and, and talk to them as much. But there's a couple coaches I really enjoy talking to in the G-Walk. Uh, the Vandalia coach, uh, he's a good guy. I like talking to him. And and so, you know, it takes some, it takes some years to, to, to form that relationship. But that's probably one thing I miss most about the about – the, coaching the Shelby County Athletic League was just uh, being able to, the relationships that I had with the other coaches. Well, Coach, listen, uh, from Fish Report here, uh, we appreciate you getting up early this morning, being on our show. Wish you the best of luck this weekend in the tournament draw. Uh, I know you got some big games coming up. you got a very tough sectional that you're going to be playing in. Yeah. And uh, do me a favor, have the Yellow Jackets continue to get the ball out on the fly because I love watching the social <laughs> media dunks on Friday night hey. about 1030. Yeah, don't say that too much. we got too many kids that want to stay out about the volleyball line and wait for Rochester to get the rebound and throw it down to the floor, uh. too. We're we're trying to get away from that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, good luck to you the rest of the season, Coach. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, that was the head coach of the Sydney Yellow Jackets, John Willoughby. Glad to get him back on the show after all those years. Ken, we're about running out of time, so let's go back to the sound room, check in with TK and Heavy D. And TK, give us your SCAL Star of the Week if you have one. Star of the Week, uh, Ken mentioned the game earlier. It was the big game, uh, Anna Jackson Center, where Jackson Center went in and put the first loss on. It was the Jackson Center led by their super sophomore, Aiden Reichert, who's had a fabulous year, fabulous year. We've seen him play twice against the Raiders, both nights having great great games. Talk to somebody from Anna, and they swear he only missed one shot making those 20 <laughs> points in that game. So he must have been on fire and uh, really kept his, his team his team in, in the game, obviously got the win. So a, a big part of that, and a, and a shout-out to Aiden Reichert, that great sophomore over at Jackson Center. Good call there, TK. Yeah, so young. He's going to be a good one to watch here for the next several years. And Heavy D, what do you got in the mailbag? Boy, a real random one this week, guys. Uh, dear Heavy, not that you're a committed, not that you've committed a felony, but if you were on death row, what would be your last supper? Whoa. <laughs> not sure where that one came from, but um, Chinese, definitely Chinese. I'd go in big and I'd go in long. <laughs> so it seems like you've given us some thought. <laughs> what? I guess it's something uh, you need to know, just in case, huh? General Sos and me go way back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great stuff, guys. Thanks for that. And that's going to wrap it up for us here this morning. Do want to say special thanks to our guest, Coach Willoughby, for joining us, like Ken said, so early this morning. Uh, thanks to the viewers out there for tuning in. For Ken and I and the rest of the crew, we'll be back again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great day, everyone. Bed, don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report. Hanging